How to Measure Gauge for Crochet. To download a guide with our five favorite tips to improve your crochet skills right now, visit newstitchaday.com slash five crochet tips. For this tutorial, you'll need the following materials. A crochet hook and a ball of yarn. Special thanks to our sponsor Lion Brand for providing today's yarn. Today we are using their Lion's Pride Wool Spun, available exclusively at Michael's Craft Stores, in the color taupe. When you're working on a pattern before you start, you want to do what's called a gauge swatch. And this allows you to see how your crochet hook combination works with your yarn. The pattern is going to say that it has a specific gauge and you want to match the gauge so that the pattern fits correctly. Now the way to do that is to measure your stitches per inch, which is your gauge. You'll want to make a swatch using the recommended hook for the yarn that you're using. And you'll be able to find that information on your ball band. If you are not able to reach gauge using the hook that you have, uh, then you will want to either go up or down a size with your hook. What that means is if the gauge is too big, then you'll want to go down a size with your hook. If your gauge is too small, then you'll want to go up. So to measure gauge, you're going to want to use some sort of measuring device. I like using a gauge ruler, uh, and you can find this uh, many sewing and craft stores. The reason why I prefer this over a tape ruler is the tape ruler actually has a little bit of play because it's flex flexible, which means that it stretches just a little bit, which we definitely do not want when we're measuring gauge. The other nice thing that I like about this gauge ruler is that because not only is it stiff, but it already has these stitches built in these uh, markers so we can really easily see where each inch is on the ruler and we can look in this little notch to figure out uh, to help us more easily count the stitches within the fabric. The other thing that you're going to need aside from a gauge ruler is some sort of place to mark or something to mark the beginning and ends with. Now you can use a, a T-pin um, or a, another sewing style pin. I didn't have any near me so I just grabbed a couple of sewing needles. Those will work fine. Um, you can even use some waste yarn that you use a darning needle to pull through. But we just want to mark the edge and where we start or end uh, the, uh, the ruler with those. Um, you can, if you would like, just use the ruler here, like the sewing ruler, uh, I'm sorry, the knitting gauge that we've got here, and you'll just mark the edge with this little red marker here. So to begin, you're going to place the needle right where the end of a stitch is, okay? And the beginning of our ruler, the ruler's edge. Now, most times when you are measuring gauge, you're going to be measuring four inches worth of stitches, and then you'll divide the total number of stitches by four. That will give you your stitches per inch. You're gonna to wanna to measure both horizontally and vertically. This will give you your stitch gauge, the horizontal measurement, and your row gauge, which is the vertical me measurement. You'll also want to make sure that you've made a swatch that is bigger than the four inches. So I generally try to do about an inch extra on each side. So between five and six inches in both directions. So you'll want to make a square swatch and finally, you'll want to block the swatch using the method that's most 
appropriate for the fiber content of your yarn. Uh, in most cases, using steam uh, is probably going to be the best option, but you can almost always wet block your fabric as well. So after your fabric is dried, uh, we will mark the edge of the stitch that we're counting, and then we'll also want to mark the other edge here. So we've got our red marker, and I'm just gonna place another pin right where that marker is. And we wanna try and get this as exact as possible. Now you can count with your ruler still in place. Again, I like this uh, sewing and knitting gauge because it has the notch in the middle. So we can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and a half stitches. All right? So again, all we do is divide the uh, four inches by ten and a half stitches, and that will give us our gauge. Now we'll do the same thing when we go vertical. So we're going to look for where the row is. Okay, we can see the row ends right here. We'll start right there. Okay, and I'm going to use these pins once more to mark where we're at. Okay, and we can use this notch here, or we can just remove the, the ruler if you choose, but we're just going to count here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six and a half rows. Um, and that might even be like six and a quarter rows. But we'll go with six and a half. So our row gauge is six and a half stitch, uh, six and a half rows for four inches, or if we divided four by six and a half, that would give us our rows per inch. And then we can decide whether or not that is in line with what our gauge is supposed to be according to the pattern, or um, if we need to adjust it up or down by changing our uh, hook size. You can also adjust your gauge by um, crocheting a little bit more loosely or a little bit more tightly. But that's the basics on how we measure our row gauge. Hey, I'm Johnny Vasquez, founder of New Stitch A Day and your teacher for this tutorial. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to learn from us. If you'd like to see more videos just like this, we produce new content every single day. Hence, New Stitch A Day. You can click the subscribe button so that you don't miss a single stitch. And if you click one of the links to the side here, you can see the previous stitch in our series or the next stitch in our series. And if you click this link, you'll be able to see one of my favorites. And don't forget, you can also download a PDF with the written instructions for this tutorial by clicking or using the URL link that's on the screen. Again, I wanna thank you so much for learning with us. And I hope that we've helped make your knitting and crochet skills a little bit better today. Yarn on.